We have a stealthy solar storm that's been launched along with some fast wind that could bring us a big solar storm just coincident with Hurricane Dorian. And the medical industry, they finally learned with space weather, you test as you fly. Those stories and more in the news this week. This forecast, sponsored in part by Eric Johansson. Check him out at Instagram.com slash Scoobist. Space weather this week is definitely picking up. We've had two coronal holes that have been rotating across the Earth-facing sun, and now the second and larger of the two coronal holes is going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next couple days. The last time we saw this coronal hole, it brought us some fast solar wind and gave us a solar storm that brought Aurora clear down to Colorado and really much all over the Western Hemisphere. This time around, we are expecting to see some more Aurora. We are expecting to reach solar storm conditions. And what's more is that there was a stealthy solar storm launch here just off of the west side of that. And that uh, solar storm is headed towards Earth. It looks like it's partially Earth directed, so it's going to probably graze us. But we're expecting the impact right around September 1st, which is really right when this fast wind is supposed to arrive as well. So it could give us a one-two punch and really enhance the storm conditions. So Aurora photographers, look forward to this. It could give us a decent show starting right around the first is when it could really peak. But there should be some disturbance on either side of it. Now on top of that, as you take a look at the uh, Earth-facing sun, it really is spotless still. So solar flux continues to be in the dumper. Amateur radio operators and emergency responders, I'm sorry, the propagation on Earth's day side for radio is pretty poor. And on the back side, it's not looking much better. But at least you GPS users, your reception should be pretty top-notch on Earth's day side, at least over the next day or so. Switching to your M-Flare threat meter, you can see the X-ray flux continues to be extremely low and therefore by proxy the solar flux continues to be low. This is the reason why we have absolutely horrible radio propagation on Earth's day side. We have no spots or any bright regions on the Earth-facing disk and so everything continues to be flatlined with our solar minimum sun. And unfortunately, you emergency radio operators, this is the way it's going to continue even with that hurricane coming toward land. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see we've pretty much been sitting at quiet conditions, bumping periodically to unsettled conditions over easily the past couple weeks. As a matter of fact, the last time we actually reached storm levels was back on August 5th. But since then, we really haven't seen much in the way of fast solar wind and definitely no solar storms. Although, since those two coronal holes have rotated across the Earth-facing disk, on the 27th, you can see we did get a little bit of a bump up to unsettled conditions from that first coronal hole. It really didn't cause much of a ruckus, but it did give us a little bit of a roar at high latitudes. We quieted down, and now we're beginning to ramp up up again. This is due to the influence from that second coronal hole that's kind of beginning to rotate into the Earth's strike zone. Now remember, this should bump up to storm levels, and we could see storm levels for easily over a day, especially with that stealthy storm that's going to be uh, hitting Earth right around the same time. So Aurora photographers, get ready. And also, you emergency responders, if you're going to be dealing with uh, radio propagation on Earth's night side, know that when the storm hits, this could be a problem for you, especially when you're dealing with a uh, response for that hurricane. Test as you fly is a well-worn phrase in the aerospace industry when designing and testing hardware that can stand the rigors of hostile space weather. And now, this approach is being used in medicine too. A new study from the Department of Radiation Oncology and Stanford University's Department of Neurosurgery has used a test as you fly mentality when determining how astronauts will fare during the long trip to Mars. This is the first study that's looked at the low dose rates we find in space, and it's the first to look at the consequences of these dose rates over time on how astronauts' brains will function and survive. Using a neutron irradiation facility, they exposed 40 mice to the same amount of radiation one would get during the shortest one-way trip to Mars. The rate of this dose, which is one milligray per day, is about the same as getting a whole body CT scan every five or six days for the entire six-month trip. According to the study, mice exposed to the radiation levels during a one-way trip to Mars showed serious memory and learning impairments, and they became more anxious and fearful as well. Study team members concluded these results should ring a cautionary bell for NASA and other agencies that plan to colonize the Red Planet. But radiation at Mars doesn't stop when we land on the surface. 
Once on the ground, astronauts will have to contend with a thin Martian atmosphere. The pressure is similar to that at an altitude of 35 kilometers above the Earth's surface. That's essentially the same altitude that Felix Baumgartner made his famous Red Bull jump, which means astronauts will have very little, if any, radiation protection. The one positive thing is that multiple agencies all around the globe are working to find solutions to the space radiation problem. Still, expect the ride to Mars to be a bumpy one. As a space radiation expert and good colleague of mine has always said, if space were easy, anybody'd do it. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially backsided monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun pretty much from the side. And when you look at Stereo's view, you definitely can see that dark coronal hole that's rotating off of Stereo's west limb. That's the coronal hole that's now rotating into the Earth's strike zone. It's going to be giving us a solar storm here in the next day. But outside of that, there's not a lot going on. You don't see any bright regions. You do see a small remnant coronal hole that could bring us some more aurora, probably to high latitudes in a couple weeks, but unfortunately for you emergency radio responders, we do not have anything like active regions or anything that's going to bump up that solar flux for you. So radio propagation on Earth's day side is going to continue to be pretty much in the poor conditions, which is not good news for Hurricane Dorian or at all through hurricane season. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the new moon phase on our way to a first quarter moon, but by the fourth, the moon will still only be about 17% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, now's a great chance to catch the aurora when the solar storm arrives or those dim objects in the sky. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that fast solar wind from the coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and it's going to be enhanced by that stealthy solar storm that was also launched, and it's partially Earth-directed, so it's going to be kind of like a one-two punch. So at high latitudes, NOAA is expecting storm conditions with up to about a 75% chance of a major storm, and this is going to last easily in through about Tuesday, and this is all happening when Hurricane Dorian is expected to make landfall. So you first responders, if you're dealing with radio propagation, especially on Earth's night side, you could be impacted by this solar storm. Luckily, most of the impacts are going to be at higher latitudes, not so much near Florida. At mid-latitudes, we are expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 20% chance of a major storm uh, right around the first, but it's going to be shorter in duration. So you emergency responders, do expect some issues, but hopefully it's not going to last all that long before things quiet down. But I tell you, with this low solar flux and radio propagation already being kind of difficult, so even small solar storms can cause some issues for you. So just be patient when you're dealing with your radio propagation. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, everything is still in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We have a spotless sun right now, which means we have no risk for radio blackouts on Earth's day side. This should make you GPS users very happy. But as I've said before, that solar flux, it's sitting in the kind of mid-60s, which means poor radio propagation for all you amateur radio operators and emergency responders. I'm sorry about that, but this is the way it is, and it does affect Earth's night side as well. So get ready for that solar storm if you happen to be working uh, Hurricane Dorian in any of the relief or disaster efforts. If there happen to be any, let's cross our fingers that that's not the case. Meanwhile, uh, because it is solar minimum, there is a uh, higher cosmic ray flux impingement than there normally would be. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes. You are in the moderate range for radiation dose, and this does include you prenatal passengers, so please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is definitely picking up. We have a big coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth's strike zone, and it's already beginning to send us some fast solar wind. And along with that, we had a stealthy solar storm that was launched to the west of Earth, but it's going to give us kind of a one-two punch that could really enhance this storm over the first few days of September. Now, unfortunately, this is exactly when Hurricane Dorian is expected to make landfall. So you first responders for radio, if you expect to be able to 
work radio propagation on Earth's night side, you will likely have some issues because of this solar storm once it hits. Hopefully that's only going to be limited to about September 1st, but it could be over the next few days following that. So you're just going to have to be patient and keep trying. Now, of course, you Aurora photographers, you're just loving life because this is going to give you some decent chance for getting some Aurora shots easily at high latitudes and possibly clear down into mid latitudes if the storm is as strong as it was the last time we saw this coronal hole rotate uh, our Earth way. Now, uh, GPS users, well, you guys are pretty much in the clear on Earth's day side. Now, of course, on Earth's night side, especially when this solar storm hits, you're going to need to stay away from the dawn dust terminators and away from Aurora in order to make sure re your reception stays top notch. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.